this is the fourth part of our discussion on analytic functions so far uh, we have uh, seen some examples we discussed some criteria to check uh, whether a function is analytic or not now there is another useful thing that uh, this notion of analytic function is going to give us for complex valued functions so remember when we were doing a uh, real valued function case and uh, when we used to discuss the limits then one of the most powerful tool was l'hopital's rule l'hopital rule helped us in finding the values of many many limits which were um, indeterminate using other methods so now the question is is this method is this rule can be extended from the real valued case to the complex valued function or not and fortunately the answer to this question is yes we can do that but using the help of analytic functions now uh, let's see uh, what is an analytic function so this is just a recall a function is analytic at a point z not if not only it is differentiable at the point z not but it is also differentiable at each and every point in some epsilon neighborhood of that point okay so and uh, the consequences we have been uh, discussing so far many many consequences of this condition okay so uh, we have this l'hopital rule and uh, uh, this can be used to do to find the limits of uh, complex valued function so what is the l'hopital rule so it is uh, very very similar to the real valued Uh, l'hopital rule okay so real valued function case so we are given two functions f and g and if they are analytic at z not so this is one of the requirement okay so if we want to apply the l'hopital rule in the complex valued function case then the functions have to be analytic and of course uh, we are discussing the zero by zero uh, indeterminate case in other words if the function is zero at point z not the numerator and the denominator function is also zero at point z not and of course uh, the derivative of the denominator is not zero at point z not then the value of the limit f of z over g of z is in fact equal to the value of the limit uh, at the same point of f prime z over g prime z so it is uh, exactly the same rule but uh, the assumptions are different now we are assuming that the functions are analytic at point z not okay now let's see how it will help us for calculating the limit now uh, the limit z approaches to iota the numerator uh, z is to power 7 plus iota and the denominator is z is to power 14 plus 1 now over here so z is to power 14 okay so if z is equal to iota okay then z is to power 14 is iota is to power 14 okay so uh, now uh, we can see them as i to raised to power 2 up to so on and this is seven times okay and uh, of course uh, uh, it is uh, odd times and so we basically we are multiplying minus 1 seven times so it must be equal to minus 1 and this implies that uh, z raised to power 14 plus 1 is zero at z is equal to out so one of the conditions is satisfied the second condition is uh, z is to power 7 plus iota at z is equal to iota okay so now once again we can easily check that this is zero okay so z is to power 7 plus iota is zero okay so in this case now uh, remember we want numerator and denominator to be analytic at point iota now these are polynomials the numerator is a polynomial the denominator is a polynomial so that's why they are always differentiable in fact they are entire function so they are analytic at each and every point of the complex plane so that's why that condition is also satisfied okay so uh, z is to power 7 plus iota z is to power 14 plus 1 are analytic at z is equal to out now one one condition is left so far we have proved that numerator denominator are analytic uh, the numerator is zero at point iota the denominator is zero at point iota the last condition is the derivative of uh, this denominator must not vanish at iota so in this case the denominator g of z is equal to z to the power 
plus 1 now we can easily check that g prime of z is not equal to 0 at z is equal to out so these are polynomials and uh, we know that they are differentiable and we can uh, easily use uh, differentiation formulas to find its derivative and check that it is in fact not equal to 0 at z is equal to iota. Now uh, this is basically indeterminate form. So when we put z is equal to iota in the numerator we get 0 and we, when we put z is equal to iota in the denominator we get 0. So it is basically indeterminate in other words we cannot determine it using the straight way methods. So what do we do? We apply L'Hopital's rule in this case. So let's apply L'Hopital rule. So according to the L'Hopital rule the value of this limit is the same as value of this limit. In other words we take separate derivatives of the numerator and denominator. Now there is a very common mistake uh, that uh, people try to use for example quotient formula. So in this case, uh, in the L'Hopital rule case, the quotient formula is not applied, but in fact we are taking separate derivatives of the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so it is basically not uh, the derivative of this function, which is the rational function. It is basically taking the numerator, finding its derivative, and writing it here. And then once again taking the denominator, taking its derivative, and writing it here. So this should be f of z and g of z okay now moving on so now we can so once again this is z so moving on uh, if we just replace z is equal to iota in the numerator and z is equal to iota in the denominator then it is not 0 by 0 form and hence uh, the value of the limit is 7 over 14 iota with a negative sign okay so of course we can find the values from the expressions of f prime z and g prime z and simplifying further, we can easily uh, find the value to be 7 out over 14. So that's how we use L'Hopital rule to find limits which are indeterminate uh, using the straight methods. Okay? So um, this is one uh, application of the concept of analytic functions. This is the end of our discussion on the concept of analytic function. So in this series of four uh, sections, we discussed what are analytic functions, how do we check whether a given function is analytic. We also discussed how we can use sufficient conditions of differentiability to find whether a given function is analytic or not. And in the last section, we also discussed uh, some consequences of this concept of analytic functions. So, for example, we discussed what is L'Hopital rule. And in fact, uh, it is uh, very similar to the real valued function case and uh, it holds in the complex valued function case using the concept of analytic function. So this is the end of our discussion on analytic functions.